Hello viewer, we would like to welcome you to our YouTube channel which is Mozda Moves. If you haven't subscribed, feel free to subscribe so that you can be able to get our content whenever we upload it. And we are starting a new lesson which is the third quarter that is going to run from July to September. If you want to access the soft copy, you can get it from our website, which is www.absg.adventist.org. And if you want a hard copy, you can be able to get it from any Adventist church near you. Now, before we go into the new lesson that we are beginning, the old lesson was was derived from Genesis. We had characters like Jacob, we had characters like Joseph, and we had a lot to learn from them. Now, the title of our new lesson is In the Crucible with Christ. In the Crucible with Christ. We are going to have 13 parts. The first part being the shepherd's crucible. The second part being the crucibles that come. The third is the bird cage. The fourth is seeing the goldsmith's face. The fifth is extreme heat. The sixth is struggling with all energy. The seventh is indestructible hope. The eighth is seeing the invisible. The ninth is a life of praise. The tenth is meekness in the crucible. The eleventh is waiting in the crucible. The twelfth is dying like a seed. And the thirteenth is Christ in the crucible. Now, you may be wondering, because the first, the, the first and second quarter, they were related in a way. The first quarter we were talking about the Hebrews. The second quarter we were talking about Genesis. Now we have skipped and we have gone into a completely different thing, which is in the crucible with Christ. But come to think of it, when you bring up a comparison between the Genesis story and this one that is talking about the crucibles, you're going to realize that there is a similarity somewhere. Where is the similarity? We are going to find it in the hardships that these people faced. That is the characters in Genesis. They told us their life stories and the hardships that they faced. So this is what we are going to be seeing also. Moving on, let's dive into the lesson. I'm Edna. And I'm Brother Moses Okeno. And I am Jotham Bamutezi. And we are the Sabbath School panel for this week. Let's have a word of prayer. Our kind and loving Father, thank you for the gift of life you've given unto us. We've come to you today trying to learn more about you. We pray, Lord, that we may grow our relationship with you through learning from the experiences other people have had with you. We pray that we may be enriched. Bless us as we learn and help somebody else out there to learn and have an impact on their lives. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. We are going to move to the lesson of this week, which has a title, The Shepherd's Crucible. Now, I have a few questions, so I'm going to ask my brother Moses, what do you understand the term crucible to be? Um, crucible as to not get you as so disrupted and maybe interpreting it because it is a rare word that is normally used. But uh, crucible is simply any container used for uh, heating at very high temperatures. It is mostly used in chemistry laboratories. Mm -hmm. So simply instead of crucible, most people know an oven. Put oven in the place of crucible. And an eating container. Yeah, that's what I can say about crucible. Thank you very much. 
And I have another question for my brother Jotham. What do you understand when you hear the word shepherd? Shepherd. Yes, shepherd. In Lema's language, shepherd is a person who takes care of sheep. I can call him a person who takes care of the flock. Can, can, can mostly the sheep, mostly. So what he tells them to do by his use of sign or by symbols, the sheep follow what the, the shepherd has told them to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our key text for this week is going to come from Psalms chapter 23, verse 3. And it says, He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This is our memory text for this week. When you hear it, what comes to your mind? It means this, this, this person that wrote this scripture was not at the best of his time, but he was seeking comfort, he was seeking refuge, he was seeking peace from God. So, diving into the introduction, we meet a, we meet a young lady who is called Sophie. The story is telling us that Sophie was very distressed at this time. She seems to be a good girl, but something has gone wrong in her life. And what is that? It's telling us that a friend of hers, someone she considered close to her, has betrayed her. What did this friend do? This friend went and spread wrong rumors about her. They spread false rumors. So she was in a, she was at a point of distress, she was heartbroken, and then as she's slouched down, thinking, sad, perhaps she was even crying, she looks on her bed and sees her Bible. And then when she opens it and contemplates on this scripture, it must have, it must have made her think, is it really true? Does he really lead me through paths of righteousness? Is he protecting me even when I'm in this valley? Is he really protecting me in the shadow of death? So, this is what came to her mind at this point. She was thinking, surely this can't be. But the logic seemed inescapable. The shepherd is supposed to be a protector. So, she was wondering, how come, how come... If this scripture is saying this, how come I'm at this point? Why am I feeling like this? Perhaps she thought maybe God would have prevented this from happening. But no. Just like the definition are crucible, it means sometimes for you to become refined, you have to go through excessive heating, which in real life may be situations that are not very good, situations that will not treat you well. That is... But that is the introduction. Now, the question to ask ourselves is, at what times have you grown more spiritually? Is it through the easy times or the hard ones? And if you're being honest with yourself, you will realize that it is mostly when you're going through hard times that you grow. It is mostly when you're going through the easy times that you relax. So therefore, I think... Everyone needs to contemplate, ask yourself, when is, it, when is it really that I agree? Is it in the easy times or the hard times? Moving on to part Sunday, it has a title, a, a guide for the journey, the shepherd. Just like Jotham said, the shepherd is known to be somebody that guides, they give direction. They give direction to the people the creatures that they are leading, which is mostly sheep. So, some children were asked to draw a picture of God. What happened when these children were asked? Most of them drew these, they drew pictures, but what stood out in all the pictures was, was that the pictures had hearts. Each and every single picture had a heart. So when they were asked why this was so, they, say, they simply said, God is love. Now, think of it. If you're in a good situation, it's easy to think of 
God is love. But what about when you're in a hard situation? When you've been pushed to the wall, do you really think God is love? Is is that something that could easily come to your mind? Now, it got me thinking because someone who is way up there like God, why would he choose to call himself a shepherd? Like of all things, why would he choose that? Then it got me thinking. When you love someone, you you end up realizing that you lo- you you grow to love things that they also love. You grow to enjoy things or activities that these people do not because you liked them before, but maybe because they have grown on you. Come to think of it in your life. Now, this happened to God too. He saw people in the Old Testament, he saw people in the New Testament, and he loved them. So he asked himself, how can I get closer to these people? How are they going to be able to relate to me? And what did he do? He decided to address himself as a shepherd because these people were pastoralists. So this is something they could relate to easily. So him being called their shepherd, it made them get to know him, understand him. It made this very easy. So what happens? It's saying because of the pastoral lifestyle of the people in the Old Testament times, Psalm 23 uses the image of a shepherd to describe the way God cares for us. The symbol of a shepherd is used for God in both the Old and New Testament. It's a wonderful picture and one that is changeless too. Now, before we survey Psalms 23, we have two questions that are going to help us make a comparison. First, the question that we have here is, what do you learn about the shepherd from each text? There are four verses, but I'm going to read only two for us to make a comparison. First, we have Isaiah 40, 11. Isaiah 40, 11 says, He will tend to his flock like a shepherd, he will gather his lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. What does this show you? It really shows love. This person is caring for his, he's tending to these creatures that he was given responsibility over. The, the second question is going to ask, now when we turn to Psalms 23, what does the shepherd do? to care for his sheep. Like we read before, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I think you can see, it is showing us how this shepherd takes care of his sheep. And what does he do exactly? So, this is something for you and me to contemplate about. And that has been part Sunday. Thank you so much, Sister Emma, for having introduced us to the new lesson. Um, it is a new quarter, and we pray you'll be with us through all the series that we are going to have throughout the quarter. And I am going to um talk about and draw lessons from part Monday and Tuesday. Um, and part Monday um, is entitled Locations on the Journey. And what are these locations that are being talked about here? Uh, when we read from the book of Psalms, um, we are basing so much on the book of Psalms uh, 23, then from verse 1 up to verse 6. Um, but I'm going to read verse 3. Turn with me to verse 3 of Psalms 23. He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. For his name's shake. Now, when we look at this verse, it is Christ who is leading us in the path of righteousness. This is the location. The path is the path of righteousness. And not for our own, our own sake, but is for his, for the sake of his name. So 
we may look at sometimes doing something which may not benefit you in one way or the other. But then, do you look, it at, look at it at the perspective of uh, presenting the name of God to somebody, uh, letting someone understand who God is in the reality of life? So, uh, the lesson writer tells us here, imagine the path of righteousness stretching from you and going to a far distance. Most especially, you will not know, you will not see the end of the distance, but at the end of the journey, we know we are going to reach home. The home of which is going to be the house of God. And in some, David introduces us to the locations we have during the journey. It is not all going to be a smooth journey. There is going to be a lot of hardship. And this is what they are terming as the crucible. Me and I talked about an oven. We all know how hot it is. And it is not easy to be inside there. Actually, perhaps it's not possible. Um, but whenever we go in that oven or that crucible and we come out, we find ourselves refined and ready to join God in the heavenly kingdom. Um, in the crucible, meaning the hardships that we are going to have, when we look at uh, verse 4 of uh, Psalms 23, it says, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, uh, they comfort me. Meaning, you as a Christian, be it you're facing a lot of hardship and trials, we should have no fear. Why? Because the rod and the staff of Jesus comforts us. We have hope that even when you are facing a lot of hardship, He is by our side. The journey requires more, uh, much faith until the end. Uh, as it was with the children of Israel who embarked on the journey from Egypt to the land of Canaan, we are also embarking on our heavenly journey. In Psalms 23, David sees the ship being led by Jesus, uh, the shepherd who is Lord. And in verse 4, we get to know that it is not a smooth uh, journey, but our only hope is rested upon Jesus, without whom there will be no success. It is only on Jesus that we rest our hope. Through him we are sure and we are assured of success. We are sure he's going to deliver us safely to the destination. Where is the destination? The house of God. Possibly at the end time we are hoping for heaven, isn't it? So the viewer out there, we know we are in a crucible. But we are being led by somebody who was in the crucible before. So he came out of the crucible already refined. And such a person we know is of experience. So no doubt we are going to reach safely. When you have a driver who is experienced, you don't have doubt that maybe you will not reach the destination. Um, why are they terming this journey as the path of righteousness? There are four things that are being talked about here uh, to indicate why it is being uh, termed as the path of righteousness. First, they are right path because they lead to the right destination. Which is that destination? The current destination we are hoping for is heaven, uh, the shepherd's home. A second, they are the right path because they keep us in harmony with the right person. Who is the right person? The shepherd himself. And the shepherd is Jesus Christ. Then, third, they are the right path because they train us to be the right people, like the shepherd. We are to be like Christ. We can't inherit the kingdom of heaven. We can't reach that destination when we are not trained to become like who? Like Christ Jesus who was initially in the crucible, so we are also in the crucible with him, such that we are refined as he was, as 
we reach heaven, we don't have any stain on us. Uh, and the last of it all, uh, which is the fourth, they are the right path because they give us the right witness. As we become the right people, we give glory to the Lord. Uh, so, one thing that we should know, it is important to realize that when God leads us, it is not simply a question of his deliverance, his delivering us, or delivering the person that we are in safely to the destination. But it is much more than uh, guidance and protection. Um, like many examples all through the Bible, we have seen examples of Abraham, we have seen examples of uh, Joseph, we have seen examples of uh, Jacob. Like all those examples, we remember how they passed through. Most especially, I pick interest in the journey that Joseph went through. First of all, he was hated by his brothers. He was put in prison. He, but at the end of it all, we find Joseph becoming somebody important. By then, when he was becoming the governor of the land of Egypt, he was really refined through the crucible. So it is always a training that we have. We should not think that God has left us to suffer. God will never leave his people. Um, there is a question here that we have to ponder through. How conscious are you that righteousness in the shepherd's priority for your life? How can trials change your life so that you better reflect the character of Christ? This is to help us reflect the, char the, the character of Christ. Then, the last part that I'm going to handle, part Tuesday, is only the, telling us unexpected detour, part one. The detour they're talking about is the valley. The valley of the shadow of death. Have you ever been in your, in your own valley of the shadow of death? And what was the experience? The valley of the shadow of death uh, may be any, anything that you are experiencing that you never expected. And it is not going according to your expectation. Most especially, you're finding it hard to go through. You feel like you can't continue. You want to leave. This is the valley of the shadow of death. Now, they are asking us, oh, are those situations what are the most precious verses that you have ever thought of and why? When we read Romans 8, 28, Romans 8, 28. You have got it, my brother? Yes, Romans 8, 28. The Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. All things work together for go, for, to those who love God. Be it bad or good, it is for the good. But for those who love God, then what is the meaning here? If you're facing any challenge, it doesn't mean God has forsaken you, but it is happening for the good for you who loves God. So, it will, it will only be that you will come out through that crucible, through that hardship, when you really refine a refined Christian, somebody like Christ. Uh, in the last part, uh, as I conclude, there is somebody here they, uh, called Elizabeth Elliot who wrote something uh, a lamb who found himself in the valley of shadow of death might conclude that he had been falsely led. Have we always concluded that we have, we have been falsely led by our shepherd, leading us into the valley of the shadow of death? No, it shouldn't be that. It is just a training that we should go through so that we come out as the right people who are like the shepherd himself, and that is Christ. Um, I know I will have something to say again. Uh, at this moment, I push the conversion, the discussion to my brother, Jotham. Welcome. Thank you very much, Brother Okello. And thank you, Sister Edna, the superintendent of today. 
Yes, in the crucible with Christ. I love that the way the lesson writer brought it out very well, right off from the introduction of the lesson itself, even before we went into the share. The, the various lesson studies. The very first crucible which happened, which has ever happened, without our notice, that we came to know about it as humans, is God Himself, God the Creator, who became sin for our for our sake, who came in the, in the in the picture of the Son of Son of God, and died for you and me. Only that is crucible enough. Many fail to comprehend it, my dear viewer. But only that is crucible enough. God created everything. Who created you and me? Turning to a form of man. Dying for us. Bearing the pain, the sorrow on the cross. Being rejected by his own people whom he created. That is crucible enough. That's the first crucible we have to understand. And because of that, that our God, who is Christ himself, who died on the cross and resurrected and won everything. When we are in the crucible with him, trust me, the assurance is one, shall also be like him, shall be victors at, 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 at the end of it all. That's why the Son of brings it at the crucible, in the crucible with Christ. Why? Christ was there before. Just like I related this to like a, a, a goldsmith person, a person who makes gold. He puts the metal there in the in the very hot in the in the, in the, the container which they use to melt it so they can become pure. But whenever he sees that it's not turning very well, he adds more fire. In case he sees that this part is, is lacking, he changes it and goes there and says to melt. That is what our God, Christ, at times does. He permits some situation to happen to us. Why? For our own good. To shape us, as my brother, my brother said. To come out as true Christians. Attempts even to, to, to reflect in our mind, on, in our lives as Christians, as a person. Am I doing what my Lord, my shepherd, has called me to do? Am I, re am I really in the right path he has told me to follow? So, so those are some of the things I would like to bring upon my dear viewers and my dear brothers. Thank you for the discussion. Well, I will be taking you through part Wednesday and Thursday. Part Wednesday has a heading, Unexpected Detour 2. We have seen the Detour 1, whereby it talks about the valley. The valley of the shadow of death. And now 2, the, the, expected, the Unexpected Detour 2. It's entitled the, the Surrounded Table. Allow me, my dear viewer, to read Psalms 23. Verse. I want, I want us to really look at these verses. I'm going to read from Psalms 23, from verse 1 to verse 3. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me bes beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. If I to begin with these verses, you feel like, yes, God is, uh, God is sick, for Christ's sake. When, when we accept Jesus Christ, everything is what? Smooth. All together. There is life in Christ's things. There is life in obeying what God has told us, which is okay, which is true. But now, just as my brother said it, the, the unexpected tour, one, the valley, comes in verse 4, which says, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your road and your staff, they comfort me. Now you have the story changes from where the path will be good, green pastures where you shall eat, you want to want, because he will provide unto you. When, when, when you lack, he will provide unto you. He's there for you at any time. He will take you the path, the, right, the, the path of righteousness. And now comes in. That even when I walk the path, <laughs> should I walk of the valley of death, of death, shadow of death, I, I will fear no evil. Are you, are you getting what I'm, I'm trying to bring? The first part is, yes, most good, everything good, yes. And that's what most Christians, most of us also believe. That when, when you ask Jesus Christ, everything will be okay. You want to want it, which is okay. You won't have problems. I want to assure you that there's no person in the Bible who didn't face problems, who didn't face challenges. 
And because of these challenges, are the things that shape us to be, bring us to the time which, calls, which is called crucible, in the crucible, facing those challenges, those problems. And part of this, the, 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 the unexpected detour too, which is entitled The Sounded Table. Verse 5 is what I'm going to base on mostly. Which says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my camp runs over. The question is, in this good, if this, 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 this verse, there is an element, something new, that as Christians, trust me, we shall, we shall find opposition. And to, to categorize it, I will call them enemies. And I want to assure you, we have enemies whom we the enemies that we can see and those which we can't see. For example, an enemy whom you can see is a, a friend of yours or a person who may not like, who may not wish you good. Whatever you do good, he tries to tarnish your name. You do something good, he said, ah, Jotham did so and so and it was bad. I think we should do this and this and maybe we should chase, away, chase him away from the community. Those are some of the enemies we can see. But I want to assure you, there are even those enemies we can't see. And particularly, I'm talking about the devil, Satan himself, with his fallen angels. We may fail to see them, but they're around us. And surprisingly, the psalmist says, the Lord himself, the shepherd, is, is preparing a table in front of the enemies. And he says that even his, 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 he has been anointed with oil, and his cup is, is running. It has been overfilled. I want to assure my brothers and sisters, the Son writer here was trying to show us that indeed as, as Christians we shall face opposition as enemies, those whom we see and those we can't see. But besides that, I want to assure you that he's telling us that not, let us not focus on the enemies we have, but let us look up to Christ. We went through all this situation which are determining the crucible. He had enemies from the word go. Even before he was, even before he was born, you remember, King Herod, what he did. I heard that there is a son going to be born, a king of, of, of the Jews. He's going to be born. You have to kill all the children who are, who are the who are going to be born. You remember? When he grew up, we saw that the Pharisees and Sadducees never liked him because of the wisdom God gave unto him of the scriptures. They just wanted to plot him to be killed. We saw Judas himself, Judas Iscariot being geared by the, the invisible enemy who is Satan himself, saving our Savior, thus betraying him, and was crucified. Those are enemies Christ had. Satan was the invisible enemy our Savior had. But he endured all, he went all through this, all this soul and this pain, and, lay, and at the end of it all, he overcame it. And now, if we talk about in the crucible with Christ, the shepherd's crucible, the shepherd was, has been there. He knows every angle, every route to take. He knows that when you take this route, my brother, my sister, media viewer, something bad will happen. But him permits you to go there for reasons. It may be in a situation that you ask yourself, why am I in this situation? Has God, forgive, uh, has God forgotten about me? My brother, this is why the psalmist brought this psalm. This psalm he saw this psalm was David himself. My, my Bible scholars believe he wrote this psalm when he was in the time of being when King Saul was looking for him. When he was being being hunted by King by King Saul, because he noticed that the land of the Lord was with David, and the time soon David would come in as a king. This is the time he wrote this psalm. So, my dear viewer, let, let us not lose heart, because our Savior is there. Our shepherd will always take us and lead us into the right path. Yes, he talked about the table, oil and cup, but this all talks about God's providence, as I earlier on said. And some may, some may see, may ask, seriously, do we, do, we, do we even have invisible enemies? Allow me to turn the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12, the Bible says, hope you are with me, my dear viewer, the Bible says, 
For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The only powers they're talking about here is Satan the devil himself with his different angels. Because they don't know people who came from heavenly places from the heavenly self. So, as we are in this journey, don't forget, we have these people whom we, whom we see who do bad things unto us physically, but even those who do unto us bad things without us, without us seeing them. So, as we are in this crucible, don't forget with Christ who won. So, as we are in Christ, let's not look at the enemies around us. Let's look towards him. Let's look up, because any time he's saying, my dear viewer, my dear sister, my brother, hold out my hand, and any time we shall, oh, we shall be out of that crucible, we shall be in the house of the Lord. Yes, that has been part Wednesday, rushing to part Thursday, which was talking about a certain promise for the journey. I want to assure you that as we're in this crucible, as we're walking this Christian journey, as we are facing enemies on, on, you know, everywhere sounded, sounding us, there's a promise on this journey. And this promise is talked about in this, in this very chapter of Psalms 23. Just read there. Psalms 23. And if you are there, please turn to verse 6. Verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This promise on the journey. The promise on the journey is, Goodness and mercy shall follow me. I want to show you, my dear viewer, and my brother and sister who are here. God is mercy. God is mercy. And goodness shall follow us wherever we go. Whether in a good situation or bad situation, because we have read in Romans 8 28, that all things work good together for those who love God and who have been called according to His purpose. So, as we in, as we in various situations, because I believe each one of all of us have different crucibles, though we are related. But as we go in these crucibles, let's have a shepherd with us, as I've said. Shepherd is crucible. Who is none other than Jesus Christ himself? Who is willing to help us, to show us the right way, to be with us, to strengthen us, so that we can come out of this crucible when we are worthy it. Because we are heading home, the house of the Lord. Otherwise, may God bless you. Thank you, Brother Jotham and Moses. Uh, in the last remaining minutes, I would like for each one of you to give a brief conclusion of the lessons you learned. I'm sure you're beginning with me. Um, uh, to uh, conclude briefly, the assurance that we have is the presence and guidance of the shepherd. Uh, who himself passed through the same crucible and he was victorious. So we don't have any reason to doubt our success, our reaching the destination successfully because we are being led by someone who was already successful. And when you read from Psalms 9, 9, uh, it says, The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Even when we have troubles, he will be the refuge for us. Thank you. We'll catch up next time uh, on the same platform. May the Lord bless you all. Yes, to so give my conclusion also on this lesson, the Shepherd's Crucible. I will majorly focus on verse 4, which talks about yeah, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Most people believe that whatever situation we are in, God causes the situation we are in. Which, which might be okay, but in most cases, God allow, permits those situations to happen to us. For example, an example of a, of a character, Job. God didn't cause Job to have the, the sores and so on, the death and so on he had. But he permitted Satan to do whatever he wanted to do, but not, on, on, but not on his life. But at the end of it all, God was with Job. Because at the end of it all, we see Job prospered, and his, everything was restored out onto him. I don't know many of you what you are facing through, and what you are going through, my dear sister and brother here. But one thing I want to assure you is, 
we may be in a situation we are in, but God, let us not lose our eyes from Christ, our shepherd. May God bless you. Thank you very much. So the conclusion is that no matter what you go through, no matter how hard, the, the good part is that you're going to come out bigger and much better. Thank you for joining us for this lesson. We hope to see you next week. Have a good week. Uh, let's have a closing prayer. Almighty Father in heaven, thank you for a wonderful lesson you've enabled us to learn today. We pray, Lord, that each and every viewer may be able to pick something that will bless them, that will go along with them, Almighty, that will change them to be better people. I've prayed all this through your Son, Jesus Christ.